Welcome to the presentation on DCU Data Science, DC123, there is the course code. Here's just a little agenda of what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm going to talk about what data science is, I'm going to talk about the course structure, the Erasmus opportunity, I'm going to talk about the entry requirements, jobs in the future, how I chose this course myself, and what it's like studying data science. So here's just a little um, kind of Venn diagram of everything that's involved in data science. We've got some computer science, maths, subject matter, expertise. Then we kind of have some stuff on software, machine learning and research. So lots of skills makes us very kind of unique. So what is data science? Data science is an interdisciplinary academic field that uses statistics, computing, algorithms, systems uh, to extract knowledge and insights from noisy structured and unstructured data. So then what does a data, science do, data scientist do? They use knowledge and insights from data to solve problems in a wide range of application domains. They build complex algorithms to organize and synthesize large amounts of information used to answer questions and drive strategy. Um, so kind of some examples of what data scientists do. Um, so say for transport, they would optimize shipping routes to get packages and stuff to homes as quickly as possible. In sports, they can evaluate athlete performance and in healthcare, they can identify and predict diseases and can provide healthcare recommendations. Um, so why should you become a data scientist? Uh, as more data becomes accessible, large tech companies are no longer the only ones in need of data scientists. The growing demand for data scientists across industries is being challenged by a shortage of qualified candidates available to fill the open positions. The need for data scientists shows no sign of slowing down in the coming years. LinkedIn listed data scientists as one of the most promising jobs in 2021 um, as well because of this kind of, you know, loads of people need data scientists and they're not my data scientists around. It kind of has a good opportunity to have a, a nice paycheck. So here's just the course structure, the year one modules here and the year two modules then underneath it. Um, so that's basically just the breakdown. As you can see here, it's kind of half maths and half uh, programming. And the maths we finish in year two. The maths is quite difficult, but um, we'll talk about the requirements in a few minutes. And then later on here, you can see that it kind of becomes more specialized uh, with data science. And then, of course, you have your intro. And in fourth year, it becomes much more complex and yet then you have your final year project if you want to know more about the structure you go on to the dcu data science website and you click on structure and then you click here this link down here and that will kind of bring you onto the page that will show you this kind of course structure the lecturers kind of what each module would go into individually the kind of the learning outcomes everything like that Yeah, now I'm just going to talk about the uh, Erasmus opportunity. So next year will be the first year that data science students will have the opportunity to study abroad for the first semester of third year. Students will have the option of studying in Lucerne University in Switzerland. So then students pay DCU fees, not Lucerne University's fees, and semester one exams take place later than DCU. They take place after Christmas. And then there's just a general timeline of what would kind of happen towards semester two of second year kind of before going away because you'd go away the first uh, semester of year three so in January you, the places would be allocated by the faculty in February students are nominated to go away and then March and April there's the online application forms kind of other documentation and then April May you'd be getting together your uh, visas to go study there your accommodation everything like that and there isn't too much information about Erasmus for the data science course, just because it hasn't happened yet. The first time that's going to happen will hopefully be this September. Uh, so, yeah, here's just the entry requirements. So you can see here there's a minimum points of 500 in 2022. And there's a minimum of a H3 in maths. But there's no prior knowledge in computing is necessary. I had no uh, knowledge in computing at all before going into this. And I found actually computing ended up being some of my favorite modules. I really, really enjoyed it. It's very kind of thought provoking. And it's it's great for people who are problem solvers because it really gets you to 
you know, use creative solutions to solve problems. And yet the duration there, sorry, is four years. And then there's a work placement in third year that lasts seven months from roughly February to September. So here's just a few of the job opportunities that you can get in the future. I've kind of highlighted some of the most interesting ones, kind of Amazon, Apple, Paddy Power, PayPal, Shopify. But I mean, this doesn't even begin to list everywhere that hires data scientists. Um, most corporations need data scientists, especially if they have large quantities of data. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to talk about kind of how I chose this course. So in fifth year, I went to an open day and I went to the data science presentation. It piqued my interest and I was determined to get into the course from then on. Uh, I enjoyed maths in secondary school, so this course really appealed to me. Um, I researched the course structure and was initially intimidated by the programming. I was less anxious about the maths portion of the course. And then some modules include a design element to them, which I particularly enjoyed because of my background in DCG and art in secondary school. Um, when I was originally kind of wanting to choose this course, um, I was yeah very intimidated by the the coding part, just I had no experience in it before, um, and I was less so worried about the the maths. But it ended up kind of being the flip once I started. Um, I really really enjoy the computing now, and while I enjoy the maths as well, I don't know, I I, I prefer the computing. Um, the math is quite challenging for this course. Um, it's very, very different to the Leaving Cert maths. Um, but of course, a good solid foundation in Leaving Cert maths will definitely be to your advantage um, in this course. So here's just um, kind of what it's like studying data science. Um, it's important to keep on top of assignments and study so the work doesn't pile up at the end of the semester. And completing assignments to the best of your ability and on time can greatly improve your grade. Some pressure is taken off the exams once you've already earned marks through continuous assessment. And tutorials offer the chance to ask questions about the coursework and assignments. The tutors are there to help, so you shouldn't be afraid to ask any questions. Uh, it's important to maintain a good balance of studying and having fun. DCU's many societies and clubs uh, provide many opportunities for events, trips and making friends. The course size is small, allowing for extra attention from tutors uh, to get help with coursework and the small size also allows for friendship to be formed quite quickly and easily so yeah let me just get on to the questions here there are loads of supports for maths and dcu there's of course all the tutors for i think every math module you have you'll have some kind of tutor um, and they're usually split into small groups i think maybe at most you'll have 40 in a tutorial. So they're really handy to kind of help with any little thing maybe that's bothering you. And then in the library, there's the Math Learning Center where anyone can go in and get help on kind of any maths topic, any math subject, whether it be linear maths or statistics. And they're really, really helpful there. Of course, everything's, you know, free in the library as well. So that's really handy. Um, but yeah, there's support for absolutely everything um i think i'll quickly go through maybe we have a bit more time um i'll <laughs> it is a very full-on course i'll go actually back to the the hours here so first year is quite a busy year in semester one they take it a bit lighter with the 19 hours and semester two for when we were doing it anyway was 27 hours which was quite a, a difficult semester, but it's completely doable. Um, yeah, because in semester one, they kind of just want to ease you in. And then, yeah, they're in year two here. It kind of eases off again, 19 hours and 18 hours. In third year, 12 hours, then your intra. And in fourth year, um, there's nine hours semester one and eight hours in semester two. And for each um, module, I'll go back to where you can find that here um for each kind of module once you go into it you can see actually the credits here so kind of that's five hours 7.5 30 five five seven and a half that kind of usually anyway indicates the amount of hours you can click into each module and it'll have a breakdown of um 
the amount of hours doing continuous assessment and um, how many hours you should spend doing independent study. So you can kind of break that down into weekly or daily, but usually they kind of have just one big chunk of hours. But yeah, it's it's quite a full on course. Um, so work placement, it's around seven months here. Let me see where did I put, there's not too much an intra here. No, but here's just some of the places that you could go. So the intra is seven months long and basically how intra works in, in DCU is that they will and you can choose from any of their of those options if you like or you can go outside of DCU and as long as you kind of have an internship for those seven months um, that would be um, perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can really kind of go anywhere that will offer you the the internship. Um, I think we only have <laughs> no bother. I think we only have a few minutes left here, so I might quickly go run through the course structure just while we have some extra time and maybe kind of give you some advice for some of the ones I can only really talk about year one and year two, as that's all I've done so far and computing ones a lot of the time as you can see here they're quite kind of evenly distributed between exam and CA I found it's really really important to keep on top of your CA um, as it takes a lot of stress off the exams um, yeah that's kind of the same really for for all of them introduction to or computer computer programming one and two yeah it's really really important to stay on top of the CA it just takes so much off um so much pressure off the exam especially if you're going in already known that you have passed um for the maths ones it's definitely I found important to go to the lectures and tutorials um there's really <laughs> the no more no better advice could I give you than go to everything that's given to you go to all the lectures go to all the tutorials and again, of course, CA is so handy for taking pressure off the exam. Um, yeah, another thing for someone that are 100% CA, don't kind of fall into the, oh, sorry, CA is just short for continuous assessment. So that could be, you know, lab sheets for the, to, for the programming, or it could be um, maths questions for the the maths modules and they could all be you know put together all those scores put together and get an average and that would be your continuous assessment score so that could be anywhere between seems here 20 to 100 percent of your final um your final mark but yeah for anything that's 100 percent ca don't kind of fall into the oh it's it's fine you know i don't need to worry it there's no exam but it's it's definitely important to to not forget about those as they can they could kind of catch up on you um there here's the last one here um it, yes and it was definitely more the maths focus it's a yeah i think computer science while they do do maths they don't do as much maths as us i think we do Apart from the pure maths courses, data science does the most maths. It's kind of half maths for first and second year. And then maths kind of plays a part in the in third and fourth year as well. There's just no, you know, pure maths module anymore. Um, yeah, and then I kind of like the idea of having the smaller course size, you know, more job opportunities than maybe computer science. Well, computer science kind of has... I think 150 was in first year when I was in first year. So I like the smaller, right? the, the smaller class size, loads of job opportunities and yeah, kind of the, the focus on maths. Um, so yeah, I think, <laughs> no problem. Um, I think that's all we have for today. So I hope you enjoy any other streams you're going to and have a nice rest of your days. Okay, goodbye.